a member of the Lifetime Achievement Esports class of 2020, a 12-time world champion, one of the first pro gamers ever, pretty much. Uh, Fatality is joining me here for a conversation. We're going to talk the talk, esports, etc. So, you know, I'll start off with the easy question. First up, uh, how you doing, man? How's everything? Uh, good, man. Just, uh, you know, still love playing video games as always. So uh, staying uh, pretty active with uh, all the newest games coming out and looking forward to... Uh, the battlefield 2042 and that comes out it just uh definitely brings back some memories back when i was in high school playing battlefield 1942 so uh, it's gonna be cool to see when that game comes out but uh, always interested in anything esports related i'm just a fan of esports uh in general yeah I, f- I feel that it's fun just being uh just being around at this point but i mean you are still kind of at the top of the world last year we inducted you into the lifetime achievement in esports class of 2020 uh what was that you know what, what did that feel like when the esports awards announced that i mean it's an it's, a, it's an honor i mean uh you know i've worked my whole life to kind of uh, show the world that you can make a living playing video games uh travel around the world a lot to do that um and it's just uh, it's nice to be noticed for, you know, kind of like all the work I did behind that behind the scenes of actually playing the game. Uh, so obviously I had a lot of fun competing and practicing and going to tournaments, and winning those. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of work behind the scenes, uh, you know, doing these type of interviews and trying to explain to people that you can make a living playing video games. And, you know, we look at where we are now. It's uh, it's really uh, amazing to see how far esports has came. And uh, but the still the competitive drive is still there every day. And it's, it's kind of cool to see that. Yeah, that was always sort of the like balancing act, you know, the, the the punk rock scene of esports back in the day where it was like, we want to be like true to our grassroots and everything. But at the same time, all these people are coming with all these opportunities. And how do we kind of like make sure esports grows in the right way, so to speak? And, you know, you were there from the jump. How do you feel about that statement? Do you think esports has grown in the right ways, the wrong ways or or otherwise? You know, I, I think it's grown uh, in a lot of the ways I push for, forward to. You know, I mean, I, I obviously want to see players uh, being taken care of in the sense of like salaries and being treated more like a traditional athlete they see in professional sports, uh, like, uh, you know, baseball, hockey, uh, you know, football or, or whatnot. Yeah, the, the the conversation you're talking about, the shift from uh, prize pool, just number one gets a whole bunch of money to a more like ecosystem where everyone can kind of grind out and get a salary. Like you said, you mentioned that we're seeing that more and more uh, across esports, you know, even even in fighting games with things like the, the Capcom Pro Tour, you know, an approach that understands that like a rising tide raises all ships. So if we can all kind of work together, it just makes, you know, I think the industry look pretty sick and like you said you're a big part of like pushing for all of this stuff and and working in that regard but let's rewind real quick you know you started way back in the day in uh with quake what did an esports tournament look like in the 90s when you were playing so i would go to these 20 man tournaments or you know 40 man tournaments um i think the biggest one i played and before you know i went to in nice time before i went to like a big tournament like where there's like a lot of money up for grabs like 120 people i went to wichita kansas and played against like 120 like high school and college kids um and i ended up winning that tournament but you know running there going there was like paying five dollars to enter you just they tell you when to sit down in front of a computer and you just play and you know was my sensitivity dialed in yet or what, what you know you're changing things like on the fly you know that was like the you know age 15 to 18 years old before i realized I was really good. Uh, you know, I guess uh, my friends had to talk me into it. You know, uh, DJ Wheat uh, was one of the guys that I used to play with back when I was a teenager. And, uh, you know, a bunch of guys up from Nebraska were just telling me how good I was. And I was like, ah, I just play for fun. It's no big deal. Like, it's not going to be a career. <laughs> so it's was, it was like, I never really thought of it as like kind of a, you know, a thing. But, you know, I was 17, turning 18, whatever deal was, and went to my very first tournament and, came on with like over a little over four grand uh for you know two weekend uh trip down to dallas texas and then uh after that it was kind of you know the ball started rolling they you know they invited me to sweden to represent usa i won 18 straight there beating the top 12 guys in the world in quake 3 arena um then i went to the big tournament in dallas texas uh a hundred thousand dollar tournament right after that and won that one and then basically just uh kind of went on a tear went to south korea for world cyber games challenge and won the gold medal there for usa and uh yeah it was just kind of like this <laughs> this rolling ball effect you know when i was 18 19 years old where i made like 150 grand and uh it was like wow this is really cool i could make a living playing video games i should not be going to school right now <laughs> so 
uh, it was kind of it's kind of wild, but that was the, my life uh, at the very beginning. I mean, that's always how it how it seems to happen. It's like it snowballs kind of out of nowhere, especially now that like the the groundwork has been sort of laid. Players jump in, and I think that's the biggest thing, the biggest difference between the generations. Uh, I'm kind of in between you and the Zoomers that are like doing it right now. Like I remember speaking to a, to a class of kids and they're like, did you know you were going to do this when you were growing up? I was like, this wasn't an option. Like that's crazy <laughs> to me that now you're 10 or 11. And you're like, I'm going to be the next scump. I'm going to be the next, you know, uh, competitive gamer, whatever game you're watching. I mean, do you think that's a, that's, that's a positive or would you have liked to have like everything laid out for you? Or uh, are you proud of kind of like forging, forging the early days? I think uh, I take a lot of pride in being, you know, a pioneer of the whole thing. So, um, you know, no one was really doing it before me. You know, there was Thresh who won the Ferrari, uh, you know, playing Quake 1 and I think it was 1997. Uh, Thresh was always like my kind of like the guy I looked to. Um, you know, it was like kind of like this is kind of an icon for me to look at. You know, I've always respected his game. But like, you know, when I came on, it was like, OK, I'm going to try to make a full time living from the prizes winning. So I'm going to do this like. There's nothing else. Like you said, there's a lot of different ways for players to make money. One, we talked about the ecosystem shifting into like a world of salaries, but you've got a world of streaming and content creation and, and you know, even consulting. You know, we see a lot of players kind of like work on the other side of the coin. Uh, as far as your come up, I mean, was all of your income from like winning tournaments and such? Or did you also find other streams of revenue to like keep the dream afloat? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the first three years I was living just off the prize winnings um and that was uh it was good money um you know and also That's impressive you know, we, for the time by the way <laughs> yeah it was it was crazy i mean but like that was the point of like you have to win everything <laughs> obviously i got sponsored uh, along the way like the beginning and so that helped pay the bills to some extent um you know obviously when you're going these tournaments your number one seed you get uh, a lot of benefits of like free travel free uh you know hotel People are always inviting you because they want you to be a, be there. So the di the different streams of revenue, obviously from the prize winning to winning tournaments and whatnot. Uh, you know, I was able to start my own lifestyle brand, uh, Fatality Gaming Gear, and so I made like these large gaming mouse pads. Um, I made like headphones, uh, sound cards. Made I basically licensed my brand to companies. Uh, a lot of the companies wanted to uh, sponsor me, um, but I was in a position where I could just kind of create my own products. Um, so basically, yeah, I was just trying to. You know, create products for gamers. I was trying to create products really for myself so I could just play better. And that was kind of the driving force. Uh, you know, these gaming companies back in those days didn't know what they were building. It was really kind of funny. I mean, they were building gaming keyboards where if you hit AS and spacebar, the spacebar wouldn't work. You know, they were making headphones that were, they were say they were gaming headphones and they were like the worst thing ever. <laughs> like they didn't even work. Uh, you know, and most of these games were developed with only stereos. So, you really just need stereo headphones. <laughs> and so uh, it was just kind of funny, like just, you know, kind of living in the gaming uh, ecosystem at an early age and and uh, watching people try to make things. And I, I was lucky enough to be at the forefront of, you know, making the first, you know, kind of gaming headset with a removable microphone, creating the first large gaming mouse pad. Uh, so I was just at the very forefront of it because I, I just knew what I needed to uh, win the game it's it's actually really funny i have a i have a coffee table made out of old pcs and one of the old fatality mobos is like the centerpiece because <laughs> it was bright red it just matches everything so oh, yeah i got awesome. a pc with my living room man i feel it <laughs> i gotta see the picture man you gotta send it over <laughs> absolutely yeah no it's 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 super sick you know seeing you know physically your legacy not just like oh back in my day i want to quake 20 no there <laughs> there there are still like things that you can buy out there that that have literally your name on it which is which is just an unbelievable. So as far as your, you know, your, we talked about your history as a gamer and sort of entering into the business world. That's kind of what you're doing right now. Ready up, I think, is what you were talking about. Tell me the details. What's going on? Yeah, so Ready Up is you know the new company I started. Um, basically, it's just my passion for esports to be more noticed by the mainstream. And so you know, I feel like there's a lot of like information out there that you know gamers aren't getting, uh, like when uh, tournaments are, when events are, um, you know, when the new season's starting, when new weapon drops, like all these things. You have to be like following all these different accounts. Uh, so for me, like you know, at Ready Up, we have these like you know we have extension with the with Twitch called Ready Up, and uh, we're also working with other partners coming online. But uh, we've been working with ESL, we've been working with uh, NBC Olympics recently used our widget, and basically we're just trying to get people 
to know about when the event is happening. Because when I used to play, it was always about being on IRC and like someone like IRC is like Discord today. Uh, and people were like, tell me, oh, there's a tournament here. There's this going on. This is, you know, and I'd always find out kind of like last second or like, like oh my God, thank God I learned about that because now I'm gonna make five grand. <laughs> so, uh, so it's just like all these things are going on in esports and, you know, we're a B2B company. So we're just trying to help uh, other businesses or other organizations organizations or esports orgs basically activate against their audience and let them know when their events are going on. And so it's just a passion project of mine that I've been working a long time, but uh, we're seeing a lot of traction lately and, uh, you know, always excited to help uh, grow esports. Uh, I'm going to ask you some real questions in, in a little bit, but we've got a quick round of word association. You guys like to have fun with this one. So you're familiar with the concept. I say a word. You say the first thing that comes to your mind. So if I say macaroni, you say pony. There it is. Awesome. Pony? Most people say and cheese, but... Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I was playing polo recently, so I was thinking of horses. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, uh, a much different world from polo. The first word is going to be Quake. Champions. Vegas. Nightlife. Mortal Kombat. Finish him. Kansas. Missouri. Golf. Uh, club <laughs> champion. <laughs> <laughs> and esports. For life. There it is. I like that last one. You're renowned for your rigorous pre-tournament training regimens. I'm actually yeah. kind of unfamiliar with that. So fill me in. What 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 is what is your pre-tournament regimen like? I would have like five or six guys come to my uh, house to train with me. Uh, I would handpick them uh, based on skill, um, based on you know are they offensive player, are they defensive player, are they strategic player, are they all around badass, and are they crazy? Um, and so it's so funny each person would kill me in a different spot in the game. And so when you're playing against the best player in the world or one of the best players in the world, um, they would have all these uh, appearances. Um, so I, I kind of attribute to like, you know, if you look at mixed martial arts, you know, a person might be really good at punching and jabbing. One guy might have a really good ground game or a really good kick game. Uh, so for me in playing, you know, first person shooters, playing 1v1 deathmatch, typically players have a, a style. And so... I'm always like trying to uh, predict their style. And so when a top player changes his form or, you know, whatever the uh, style is, I would know how to beat that style uh, very fast. So I was, able, I was able to adopt and adjust. Well, a good regimen obviously leads to good results. You won pretty much the world for a little while. Uh, after you retired, I'm going to check myself. Uh, once a gamer, always a gamer. As we continue into the future, you start becoming more of an entrepreneur than a uh, more t more hours spent in the office than on the battlefield, so to speak. Um, were there any skills as a because I get this all the time? Pro gaming, no real. Were there any skills from your player career that you took with you into the world of business? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you look at competition, even in the business world, you know, we're always you know looking at what the competition is like out there and and trying to make offer a better service and. Uh, making sure that we are bringing value to our customers and whatnot. So the real esports are the friends we met along the way, right? I think almost all my friends are in esports or in gaming somehow, you know? <laughs> or if not, I try to convert them as fast as possible. I feel that, man, for sure. Uh, let's let's fast forward. We did a lot of rewind. Let's fast forward now to November at the esports awards. You know, you're suited. You're, you're Everybody's looking good here. Which award would you like to hand out like what is your dream award to hand out probably player of the year uh would be something that would entice me it just uh i'm always a fan of someone who's very talented at what they do and and they're the best at what they do the pursuit of passion i i, yeah. I see that i totally get that i think that's a, a lot of fun to talk to people like that another fun game not word association this time this time it's either or i say uh you know up or down you say up there it is okay <laughs> i got it though i i, I we got there. We I, got I, there. I, used, I used to play games. Uh, it was much more difficult than this. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. All right. I got a whole bunch out here. <clears throat> blue or red? Who? Um, actually, it's uh, blue. I could have a reason, but it's because the old CRTs were always so red. And only you could see the enemies that they're blue. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like that one. Sonic or Mario? Mario. Film or TV? Film. Golf or football? Football. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Lamborghini or Ferrari? Ferrari. Hamburger or hot dog? Hamburger. Summer, winter? Winter. Instagram or Twitter? Twitter. You got a time machine. Forward in time or backwards in time? Backwards in time. Xbox or PlayStation? 
PlayStation. PC versus console. PC. X-ray vision or super strength? X-ray. Would you rather be an Olympic gold medalist or a Nobel Peace Prize winner? Today, Nobel Peace Prize. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes, definitely. Fatality, what does esports oh, mean to you? Competition, playing with the best. Uh, may the best man or woman win. It's been awesome having you around, man. Thank you so much for taking time out and uh, hanging out with us here at the Esports Awards. Yep, I appreciate it very much. And uh, best of luck to all of you. And as always, guys, got to practice. Got to practice, practice, practice. That's the only way, guys. That's the only way. And now it's time for you to go practice. Have a good one, guys.